Hello, it's Renata. Today I am going to talk about gang stalking, organized stalking, whatever you want to call it, um, tactics or techniques that the um, perpetrators use on the target. Now, most of this is already known to, uh, to anybody who has been dealing with this any length of time, but I think it's really important to do a video on this because number one you may not receive all of these tactics so if you do you'll be familiar with them but number two I think it takes the shock value out of it when you already know what it is because especially in the beginning of targeting when you're not quite sure if this is part of your harassment or if it's all in your mind or what so if you hear it um, and it's already put out there I think it will it will not um, shock you as bad okay and those 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 shocks turn into traumas so we're trying to prevent uh, all these recurring traumas in our lives so that is the purpose of this video so I had actually come up with a bunch of tactics that I know about but then I found a website that laid it out pretty pretty good so I'm going to uh, go off of what I see on this website but I'm also going to incorporate some of my own that I came up with that I did not see here okay and I'll put the information for this website in the uh, description box so you can check out the website at your convenience Okay, so of course there's no way to list every single tactic because there are millions of them, and I mean literally millions. Um, they 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 just have so many tactics, and the thing about the tactics is um, these stalkers they have basic things that they do to most TIs, and then they kind of critique it to the target depending on what the target reacts to okay so um, they may do some standard things especially in the beginning but then you may never see that tactic again or you may see a tactic play out in your life more than others and that's because you apparently reacted um, probably over the top a little bit to that particular um, to that particular tactic so they'll keep that going they'll make that a recurring theme or sometimes they'll they'll do some things and then you won't see it again for a while and then it'll come back around so it just depends but it definitely feeds off of your reaction and I believe for me that must be why I get so much of the police talking because apparently I um, really gave a strong reaction to that in the beginning which I know I did actually because I, I would complain about it a lot so they know that that bothers me and so they've continued it all these years so that's that's how it goes alrighty so a large part of the harassment involves um, psychological harassment and this is all about um, harassing you psychologically okay so to achieve this um, a profile of the target is gathered and then a program of harassment is implemented and here are some of the tactics brightening as targets walk on the street usually at night suburban spies will turn on their head beams on their uh, excuse me of their high beams on their cars and you'll also see this on bicycles sometimes they have bicycles with the lights on the, on the front and they'll you know try to brighten you that way um, or you may see it in your neighborhood uh, sometimes they'll have these big flood lights on their houses and the light may even be shining in your window or somewhere towards you all of that is brightening okay and that's pretty much to let you know that they're watching you crowding or mobbing this is when the target is in public and they'll try to box you in or you're at the cash register you can be the only one in the store and before you know it you have all these people around you now this really can um, this can really cause a lot of stress this can really cause you some anxiety so if you need to remove yourself remove yourself 
you know, and then maybe you later you want to challenge yourself to to, you know, to just stay there and deal with it. But in the beginning, I would advise that if it's going to cause you to stress out because all of this is to trigger you and to get you to react you know, strongly and go off and snap on people and all of that. So you don't want to do that. There, there are many times um, at the beginning of my targeting where I had to leave my whole basket in the store and just, just leave because I was so stressed out. So if you have to do that, then do that. But then later, as you, you know, develop with this, then try to challenge yourself to, to just stay there and stand your ground. Directed conversations. These are conversations that complete strangers will have out in public relating to you and your personal situation. Things that no one should know. They'll say things in your um, in earshot of you. They may talk directly to you if they know you, but you may hear them having a conversation with someone else regarding you. So that's called directed conversation. I remember when I first um, got targeted, I was at Costco and this man came up to me and he just kind of casually walked past me and he said, did you get your yogurt today? And that was on the Sunday and every Sunday I would go and buy yogurt for the week. So that is directed conversation. I ignored him. I knew he was a stalker, so I ignored him. But those type of things happen. There's uh, one target that, that told me that they were um, constantly, because he, he worked in retail, so he worked with the public. So they did a lot of direct conversation with him. And they would always say things about um, car accidents and things like that. And his father had died in a tragic car accident. So they do things like that. Do not let that alarm you. It, it is just them being stalkers. Don't even respond to it. That would be my suggestion. Um, and here's an example on this website. It says, um, spy number one says it's a shame Uncle Ed won't be able to come. And spy number two says, yes, since he died golfing on Saturday. The target will just have learned of a death of a favorite uncle, possibly named Ed, while out golfing. Okay, so in this example, the target didn't even know their family member had died, but these um, perps kind of had that conversation around him. So they'll do things like that. You know, it, with all of this, it's one of those things you never let them see you sweat. You know, so even if it is uh, something very personal and is getting to you, try not to let it show. Okay. Directed energy weapons, electronic harassment, using when they feel they have psychologically targeted a target to where they are near breakdown, they will start to use weapons. They will also use these weapons if targets are not going along with their harassment protocols. Okay, and these are satellite based weapons. Some are land based, some are um, your neighbors may have them in their houses surrounding you or their apartment, and they can. You know, direct them at you and it can cause you headaches and pains and all of this. It's, it's invisible weapons. And there's plenty of videos out there on that and plenty of information on the Internet about that. Investigative files. It has been indicated that targets will have files shown to their relatives, storekeepers, and friends. These files are usually not left behind, but they are used to show legitimacy and to further slander the target. So they will have these fake files, you know, saying the target is under investigation. They'll show them to people to get people to believe them and to go along with your harassment and to participate in this. Okay, and it usually works. And uh, the file may even have a picture attached to it. Okay, a lot of slanderous stuff. And it gets people to go along with it. Gaslighting, doing little things uh, to try to make the target think that they're going crazy. They will come into your house when you're not there. They will move furniture around. They will um, uh, bother things in your closet. They will remove things, replace things, unlock your doors, take small things, move things around in your refrigerator, all kind of stuff. And it really does happen to people. They usually don't steal 
things or if they do they'll bring them back just is to gaslight you and that term comes from the movie gaslight which is like a 1930 movie or something like that so if you haven't seen that movie um you may be able to find it on youtube but you should be able to find it somewhere online where the husband was trying to gaslight his wife and trying to make her think that she was going insane when it was really him using all these tactics on her okay so that's where that term comes from and it happens a lot, a lot, lot with the um, with the stalking. One of the things they used to do to try to gaslight me, it wasn't necessarily coming into my house, which they probably do that too, but um, it was in public a lot because they um, harassed me with law enforcement type people from the very beginning. So they would have uh, a security guard in the store following me around to try to make me you know appear paranoid and all of this stuff and then he would get in line and he would buy something so he really wasn't a security guard that worked there so they do all these little mind tricks you know once you get to know them you can ignore them because it's just them they do all kinds of silly stuff like that um, gassing and poisoning, spraying fumes or scents into a target's home, tampering with their food to make them become very ill. Many people are food poisoned. Um, uh, people have said that they have smelled uh, gases and poisonings in their cars. Um, some people say they are sprayed. So that definitely does happen. Uh, food is contaminated a lot. I've heard Target say that. They say even some of the food they buy from the, from the store is repeatedly um, contaminated. Okay. Illegal entry to, uh, to gaslight the Target. It is used to help profile the Target, to set up illegal surveillance. It's a way to find out intimate details about the Target. This can be used later to set up the Target by using people in uh, photo albums or by directed conversation about things in the Target's apartment. There's a guy on YouTube, I think his name is Scott Crow. He he was or, or is an activist and he said how um, how he had got his FOIA request, his Freedom from Information Act request which is if you request that it's supposed to tell you if you're on any kind of list or if the if FBI or the government is watching you for anything most targets who get their FOIA request um, just get a chain letter saying we can't tell you anything but this guy had gotten an attorney and he was able to get his and he said he was so surprised at all of the um, people that he had been interacting with that were actually agents and um, also that request that he got revealed that they had been that the garbage people had been going in his trash can retrieving personal mail and personal information just to gather a case on him. So that that really does happen a lot. And I think that happens more in the beginning. This is just me thinking this, that that happens more in the beginning when the target is unsuspecting, when you really don't suspect anything going on. They do a lot then. Okay. Illegal surveillance. This involves setting up audio and visual surveillance of the target, bug bugging the target's phones, or using external listening devices. Video surveillance inside or most likely outside of the target's residence, listening to cell phone and hardline conversations, hacking into their computers and learning all about the target and what they're doing. And this also helps to build a profile. Um, well, Edward Snowden told us about the the um, the telephone and the computer tappings, which most targets knew this anyway. He didn't have to tell us, but he did inform the rest of the world. Um, but this, you know, this really does happen. Um, a lot of computer hacking does happen. Um, your computers will also be. Um, you'll find that you get more viruses than more people. I know I do. Um, so they de they definitely do get into your computers and, and your home phone and your cell phone. I think most people know by now that your cell phone is a, um, 
a two-way radio basically so some targets wonder how do they know everywhere I am and where I'm going there's many ways that they know many ways um, a lot of people probably are microchipped that's one of the ways or you don't even have to be microchipped because they can just send a signal from the satellite to your body and track you anywhere on the globe in which they're probably doing with all of us um, but also your conversation is um, is heard from your cell phone and even if you take the battery out of your cell phone most phones now have a hidden backup battery so they can hear you know they can hear your conversations um, illum illuminating targets this is something that the East German Stasi secret police did to targets they would spray the targets clothing with materials that would make them glow or they would irradiate the targets with x-rays uh, so that they glow in the dark there are harmful and harmless chemicals that will achieve this effect okay intimate infiltration this is where suburban spies will go out of their way to get into the targets life they will try to form friendships with targets they will try to form intimate relationships with targets and if a target doesn't know this you definitely should because they will definitely send people into your circle absolutely because they want to make sure that you are targeted 24 hours a day and seven days a week so tactics will be used on you every single place you go work church home friends out to drinks to the movies I mean 24 7 I guess it's going to depend on um, how heavily you're targeted I guess I guess when I think about this may not apply to everyone but for the most part they they definitely try to infiltrate your circle you know because they want to destroy the target so they will get people into your life who you think are friends who will pretend to have something in common with you um, it could even be someone you knew all your life it could be a relative who they turned on you and in the intimate area same thing these people will go so far as to marry you just to target you to date you you know so you really have to be careful it's a fine line though because you don't want to be paranoid but you do want to have your eyes open to this because these people mean you no good and they definitely are there to try to harm you and to get you um, on you know off track get you on drugs get you drinking they may even intentionally put you in a domestic abuse situation get you into prostitution all kinds of things I, I've heard all the stories I've heard all the stories there's a young lady who talks about how uh, she went to college not knowing that she was targeted and now that she looks back the um, her uh, a guy that she dated in college he got her on drugs and everything and she looks back and she sees that that whole crowd that she hung out with in college they were all sent to target her so it's something to really um, pay attention to okay isolation for this uh, harassment to be successful it's important to be able to isolate the target from friends and family members and co-workers and even spouses if they can possibly do that uh, to accomplish the isolation many methods are used including but not limited to slander lies files sabotage anything that will get the target into a situation where they have no support system and no support is very important for this harassment to be successful that's the whole goal to isolate the target and sometimes they do so many tactics on you that the target just isolates themselves because they just don't know who to trust they don't want to be bothered with anybody and they have put so many people in your life that betrayed you 
that you just decide, you know, you just don't want to deal with anyone. And they love that because they want you to be isolated. Because if you are in isolation, you have no form of support. So if you ever uh, are down on your luck, there's no one near to help you. You need a listening ear. There's no one near to listen. Nothing. You need food. There's no one to get it from. So they want you isolated. And these people really are very good at working through the family. They work through the entire family little by little. They'll get one person that will spread the news to the rest. You know, they play the crazy card. We know that. You know, that person's crazy. He's crazy. She's crazy. You know, and then they get the whole family to turn on you. Now, if your family has not turned on you, you should thank the Lord. And you should stick very close to them because so many targets have lost their family members because of this program. And you'd be surprised at how many people will tell you that their family not only has abandoned them, but they are in on their targeting. I've heard the stories. People's grandchildren target them. People's spouse target them. Their own children target them. Their best friend from kindergarten targets them. So it happens. COINTELPRO. Okay. Mail and email tampering. They will steal your mail in some cases. Um, the delivery of your mail may be delayed. I remember last Christmas I ordered some things and when it arrived, it, it arrived at um, one of the, uh, what do you call these, UPS stores. And they sent me something. They told me it was there. Um, I went up to get it. They had sent it back. And I'm trying to ask them, why did they send it back? And no one could explain why they sent it back. So you get all these little games, you know, all these little games. Um, my mail in the beginning was constantly opened. And it was the mailman, I believe, because the mailman is definitely in on the targeting. And with my mail, it used to be open right on the corner, on the right corner. It would just be torn right there. So um, it happens. It happens. You just may not even get your mail for weeks at a time. Or I know people who are targeted with a lot of junk mail. They just get all kinds of ads that they feel is targeting them because they know how they get targeted. So they, they, they do all kinds of stuff. Um, email, same thing with email. Your email may be tampered with. Some people say they, they don't even get emails. They just don't get emails, you know, or your emails may be deleted or things like that. Okay, mimicking. This is um, trying to copy the things in a target's life. They will leave when you leave. They will um, come around you with the same type of cars that you drive. They will dress like you dress. They will wear their hair like you wear yours. They will throw out the garbage the same time you throw yours out. Um, go to the bathroom. You might hear toilets flush. Um, do whatever the target is doing. They will try to mimic you. And this is all um, psychological warfare. This is all to let you know that you are um, under observation at all times. Okay, profiling. Targets will be observed and profiled long before they ever become aware that they are targeted for this sort of harassment and profiles will be created. So you're going through life and you don't even know that this is happening. And then one day they want you to know so they bombard you. And that's a really dangerous time because that's when you can really go over the edge. Comes a time where they will want you to know but that's after they've done all of their profiling. Okay and the way they profile is they follow you um, 
They follow people that are close to you. And that's another thing that that guy, I think his name is Scott Crow, that he talked about when he got his FOIA request. He saw in there that they had been following his friends and relatives, okay, because they were trying to get to know things about him. Um, they'll break into your home and go through your stuff, maybe even go through your photo albums and things like that. Listen to your calls, hack into your computers, um, gather information on your family and friends, uh, getting information on where you like to shop, where you like to eat. The places that you frequent, the people that you hang out with, what are your weaknesses, what are you scared of, what do you like the most, you know, who you like, who you don't like, just profiling you. And they'll put that whole profile together and they'll turn that into your, um, your targeting protocol. Okay, random encounters. This is going to be people on the street who you just happen to run into. Just random and unexpected. And it'll look so natural. It could be people you haven't seen since the third grade. And just random encounters. And they might try to get back into your life. Ask you for your phone number. Engage you in conversation. Ask you out on a date. You know, just ask you where you're going. When I think about it, I think my targeting has been going on much longer than I really uh, realized. Because everywhere I have gone on a vacation or on a trip, I ran into someone that I knew. And that's really odd. That's, that's odd for that to happen every single time. I mean, as far away as Hawaii, you run into someone. So... They do this. It's just like these, it, they appear to be chance meetings, you know, or you could be in the store and then you run into somebody that you haven't seen in a long time or someone you, you currently work with or currently go to school with. It happens a lot. Also, they will send lookalikes. They will send lookalikes around you. Someone that normally the lookalike is going to be either someone you have an issue with or um, someone that maybe you were very close to that broke your heart back in the day or um, someone that passed away. It's going to be something, someone, uh, the lookalike is going to be someone to re-traumatize you. It's going to be some kind of trauma attached to that, that person. And they do that a lot. Now, I don't know. They must have a database or something of these stalkers because they will definitely send lookalikes. And many targets will tell you that that happens. And again, I'm, I'm, I felt the need to do this video because I, not to rehash all of these stalking tactics, but just to put it out there so that if, if you um, encounter any of this stuff, it, it won't shock you. You'll know it's them. Because for me, that helps because I, I definitely tell myself it's just them and, and that's that helps me to just keep it moving. So I'm hoping the same for you guys. If you um, don't know of some of these tactics, you may not get any of these tactics. I don't know, um, but I, I just want to put it out there. OK. I'm trying to find where I left off at. Um, Friendships, um, they'll try to tell lies to come between, you know, your, your friends. Um, all of a sudden, you may discover that you really don't have as much in common with people anymore because a lot of people will start to look at you as odd or um, especially if you talk about this, you know. So it may be a little hard to, um, to maintain friendships even with family members. Okay. Yeah, I lost my place here. Let me see. Where was I? Okay. Sensitization. This is when 
they try to get the target uh, sensitive to everyday stimuli. It could be colors. Of course, they do the color stalking. I don't know if I mentioned that. Their favorite colors is red and black. So you might see an excess of people with red and black on. Now, it, it can get real confusing because those are two primary colors that a lot of people wear. Red is a very common color. Black is a very common color. Um, but you may see an excess of that. Okay. However, with that being said, red and black, their favorite stalking colors, but not the only colors that they will use to stalk you with. They could be any colors. I've seen them all. So it, it, you know, it just depends, but red and black seem to be their favorites. Um, also, you can see different patterns. It could be, it may be stalking you with circles or stripes or um, just about anything, anything that they can sensitize you to. It could be whistles, uh, uh, whistling, um, coughing, that's a favorite of theirs, um, spitting, they like to do that, keys jingling clapping waving ink pens i mean anything these people will stalk you with anything anything and if you react to it you'll, you'll keep seeing it okay so here's an example joe will be mobbed at work and as a part of that daily mobbing his co-workers will loudly cough at him every time they harass him by calling him names like loser or worthless or lame or demented they will slander him and have others, as they are slandering him, show disgust by glaring and coughing at him. Now, um, staring, that's another tactic. Um, the coughing, you know, the calling names and all of that. I, I would suggest do not react to any of that at all. None of it. You know, if you can wear sunglasses and have some earbuds you know i don't really suggest having your music loud when you're on the street i have reasons for that i'll do another video on that but um you know just ignore sunglasses and earbuds usually really help to ignore they really do um And then here's another example. It says a girl is sexually assaulted and a sock is shoved in her mouth during the assault. To keep her quiet or stop her from pressing charges, the assailant, his friends, and family will follow her around and throw socks in her path. That's, that's really um, very traumatic, but they will do things like that. They will definitely do things like that or any kind of traumas that you've had from your past, they will probably try to um, re-traumatize you and do things that will remind you of that trauma. You may see cars and trucks with decals. Um, license plate stalking is very, very popular. Um, that's a really uh, popular tactic with them with the license plates. You'll see an excess of out-of-state license plates. Um, that doesn't bother me in the least bit. I tell myself those people live right around the corner, down the street somewhere. That, that but that that um, I do know people who have a very hard time with that because they get certain states license plates a lot. Um, there will be license plates with messages on them. I had one that said, "You are too nosy." I have a picture of that. I should uh, find that and post it. It says you are too nosy, and that's when I came from uh, from City Hall from speaking out about this. So you know they'll try to send you messages through license plates and and things like that. Um, they will communicate with each other using um, Stasi like. Excuse me. Um, they will communicate with each other on the street using Stasi-like uh, signals. And some of the signals are watch out, the subject is coming, and they'll touch their nose or hand with the hand handkerchief. Um, the subject is moving on or going further, overtaking, um, and they'll do they'll stroke their um, hair with their hand or, or raise their hat briefly. Subject is standing still. 
lay one hand against the back or the stomach and this is how they're communicating so one stalker may be here and the other one may be five or ten feet away um, observing agent wishes to terminate observation because um, cover is threatened that's when they would bend down and uh, bend or retie their shoelaces the subject is returning both hands against the back or on the stomach observing agent wishes to speak to the team leader or other observing agents and uh, take out briefcase or equivalent and examine contents now I you know I, I, I do know people who who know these um, hand signals pretty well I, I would suggest not paying attention to that stuff I mean if that's just something you want to do I understand but um, I just think give, give them as little attention as possible okay slander they'll go behind the targets back and tell lies about them they'll say things like you know the target is dangerous or into something illegal um, pedophile and they'll they use the pedophile for men and women you know of course the crazy card they always play the crazy card um, they'll tell people that the target is a prostitute that they're gay that they're racist um, so many so many scenarios there they, they'll, they'll tell anything they can to get a person to turn against them um, the sleep deprivation is a very popular um, thing that they do to targets it's a good way of keeping the target stressed out because if you have minimal amount of sleep it's gonna make you uh, pretty stressed out and you're gonna be pretty cranky so uh, make sure you take care of yourself if you can't sleep at night get a nap during the day you know do what you can to sleep look for some natural um, remedies to sleep because there is some natural things you can do I know sleepy time tea is one of the one of the um, the things that I um, had used a time or two I don't really have a lot of problems with sleep actually I get sleep induced my sleep is induced um, but a time or two I had had a problem going to sleep and I drink some sleepy time tea which you can get right there in your grocery store um, it tastes just like regular tea and it, it really worked also meditation there are some sleep meditations you can find on YouTube if you're having a problem with sleep but it is very important to get your sleep okay because Without that, um, they can really get you to go over the edge and to react, you know. Or you can you can get in a car accident or just anything. You really you really need your sleep. Okay, very important. Street theater. I think you all know about street theater. Um, I did a, a video on that. It it um, basically is just like it says. It's theater right there on the streets. It, they're just acting. These people are acting just to target you and they do some very unusual over-the-top productions at times um, also um, just rudeness general rudeness some uh, targets encounter just rude person after rude person you know um, and that's another way to get you to overreact and if you're the type of person that is short-tempered you're probably going to experience more of the rudeness and you know people rolling their eyes and people staring and people with attitudes and all of this and of course it's all to get you to react and to get you to lash out on someone okay telephone redirects uh, when you make a phone call you may get redirected to someone else and you know you dialed the number right or with these cell phones all you have to do is push a button so um, you should get to that person or whoever you're trying to call but uh, you will be redirected at times there's a lot of things they do with the telephone a lot of things you can be put on hold forever <laughs> forever you know and then they just not come back to the phone um, I know in the beginning of my targeting every time I would come in the house my phone would ring every single time every time I walked in the phone would ring that was part of the targeting um, 
I would get a lot of phone calls and when I would answer it would be a Spanish speaking person talking real loud and you could tell it was like some customer service person from somewhere not the United States um, and I would get that a lot so there's a lot of things they do with the telephone okay the target will be tracked I think you guys know that they can pretty much track you anywhere it doesn't take a targeted person to find out it doesn't take a, a targeted person long to realize that no matter where you go you won't be alone a stalker is gonna show up it doesn't matter you could be on a one-way street on a dead end I meant to say a dead end street and somebody's gonna show up and that's just for them to let you know that you know they know where you are at all times this is like the all-seeing eye that all-seeing eye big brother they want you to know this is just an extension of that okay so all of this is to get you um, hypersensitive they want to get you hypersensitive to all of this to let you know that we're watching we're after you you know this invisible threat you know you're going to jail we're gonna put you in a mental institution you know it's just to just sensitize you to everything the more stimulus they can get you sensitized to the better they can target you the better they can mind control you the better they can change your behavior the better they can get you to stop doing the things that you do and the better they can get you isolated and out of society that's the whole goal okay so I just wanted to put this video out um, hopefully this will take the shock value out of it for someone because I know it helped me a lot and it still does when I hear um, people talk about different things and then if it happens to me and then I remember that I heard someone else say it so it doesn't it doesn't um, affect me as bad let's see if I left anything out there's tons of, of tactics as I said in the beginning but some of the ones, the dog walkers, I'm sure everyone has seen the dog walkers. The dog walkers come out of nowhere. Um, anyone that can be in a natural environment, they will use. Okay, It looks very natural for people to be walking their dogs. But you will see an influx of this. Okay, um, The police cars, I think I mentioned that. All the first responders, they're out there stalking people. Your um, firemen the ambulance, the police, um, who else have I seen, the tow trucks, the taxi cabs, the buses, yes the buses do uh, do stalk, um, the black Lincoln Town cars or any of those cars with the little numbers on the back, um, the armored trucks, I get those, um, your utilities, you know, PG&E for California, um, the phone company. I mean, I, I've seen so many. I, I could be here all night telling you um, all the different ones. But you'd be surprised. It, 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 in the beginning, it took a while to wrap my mind around the fact that, you know, that the mailman is involved and the police are involved and the ambulance. I mean, it's... Um, it, it took a while, but they really are. A lot of these companies, a lot of vendors, I get the potato chip people, you know. Um, it, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of people involved in this, believe it or not, it is. Uh, the sirens, you'll get the sirens a lot. Uh, some targets, not everybody gets the police and the sirens. Or the fire trucks with the sirens. Um, but that's another tactic that they use. Uh, people wanting to open the door for you. I think I said that already. People sitting around in their cars. Um, I, I know uh, I never go somewhere and come back and someone's not sitting in the car next to me. So that's that's a really common tactic that they use on me where someone's always sitting in a car next to me or somewhere around me. Um, if they're not sitting there, they're standing there. You know, so I get that a lot. Uh, 
people passing by your house, your apartment, foot, car, bicycles. I get the bicycles a lot. You might see the bicycles on the road as well, on the hitched on the back of cars. Um, they ride past, you know, up and down the neighborhood a lot. A lot of synchronizing. You'll see people trying to synchronize with you. They're coming and going. The neighbors are coming and going the same time you're leaving your house. Um, they're going to their cars a lot, going to their trunks like they left something. All of that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Air stalking. Now that was a hard one. That one was really um, hard to get used to, the air stalking. I, I just couldn't, I didn't want to believe that that was actually happening. But again, that's something I learned from the TI community that helped me to know that it really does happen to other people. They actually use aircraft. It could be a regular airplane. It could be a helicopter, whatever, to fly around the target's home. Um, or one person says they follow him in his car. So it happens. That's a hard one for people to believe, but it happens. Vandalisms. You'll see, you know, a lot of your things may get vandalized. Your cars, uh, constant flat tires, uh, cars stolen, uh, property vandalized, uh, random pieces of paper just thrown on the ground. Um, one person said T-shirts. I think they were throwing T-shirts around her neighborhood. Um, but yeah, they'll leave little pieces of paper and things. You know, little stupid stuff, but they, they do it. Um, tow trucks. You'll also see these, I don't even know what you call them, like transport trucks with a lot of cars in them. Um, like they're taking these cars to a car dealership or something. You'll see a lot of those. Um... You may get um, blocked in or cut off a lot when you're walking or driving. That may happen. People may just walk in front of your car, which is a video I just did for the lady that said that happened to her son. That happens a lot. Of course, you may get followed um, on foot by stalkers. That happens a lot. People taking your picture. That happens a lot as well. And when it happens in the beginning, you're like, did someone just take my picture? But yeah, they do it. They do it. And this is all to kind of sensitize you. Um, if you drive, you may get cars that speed past you, cut you off, try to run you off the road. Uh, noise campaigns where they're just making a bunch of noise, being ignorant. They'll do that, especially in uh, apartment complexes. I always advise if you can rent a house or if you can um, rent the back of a house or something, if you rent, um, that would be better. Anything where you don't have to share a wall, because when you have to share a wall, they will bang on the walls. They will uh, play the music loud. They will do all kinds of uh, noise campaigns. That's what that's called, noise campaigns. Okay. I think we got it all here. Uh, you may get these um, stalkers that want to do this small talk with you. You know, that's just to try to information gather or um, psychologically harass you or do some sort of directed conversation or something. Okay, I think that's it. Um, the bottom line is, you know, wherever the target is, there's pretty much going to be a perp somewhere in the vicinity. Um, even if you are the type of person that stays in the house, they will find a way to target you inside of your home. You, if, you, if you are really housebound, you will probably get more of the direct energy. Um, I suggest that people go out and live their lives, you know, learn how to deal with this stuff. Let them know that no matter what tactics you're going to do, um, it's not going to stop you, you know, from living your life. You know, feel what you feel, but don't let it stop you. You know, if it scares you, that's OK. You'll get stronger. Just keep facing it. You will get stronger. Ask God for help and he will help you. 
but do not uh, give up your life. Do not give up your life because these tactics are designed to mind control you and to hold you back and to keep you from living your life. So you don't want to do that. You know, if, if, if uh, people turn away from you, which most targets will tell you they've lost friends and family, um, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people will tell you that at least a, a couple of people have turned against them. But, you know, it's okay. You know, thank God, because you don't want to be dealing with someone who is trying to target you because they will only do you harm. You know, so isolation is not a good thing, but uh, there are people in the targeted community that maybe you can, um, you know, talk to on a regular basis. You can go to some of the support calls or, um, you know, whatever you have to do to be around people. If, if you go out in public, you know, uh, social situations, then um, there are people there. Just hold small talk with people. If you're comfortable with doing that, any kind of interaction is better than none. Um, but don't allow these tactics to remove you out of society because that's exactly what they want to do. But you deserve to be in society just like everyone else. So um, I hope this helps someone. I, I really um, do because I know that if we can just um, take the um, the trauma out of this because that's exactly what they're trying to do with these tactics they're trying to traumatize us so if we can take the shock value out of it then we can lessen the traumas okay so that was the whole point of this video and uh, thanks for listening and God bless and stay strong